Elizabeth Hoffman has decided to step down. Stay tuned to find out what this means for the university. We sat down with the candidates for the GSB presidency. The interviews are coming up. And it was a busy weekend in cycling sports. We have all the highlights and more from Saturday's doubleheader coming up. Stay tuned for Newswatch 18. Live from Studio B, this is Newswatch 18. Newswatch 18 starts now. Good evening and welcome to the February 20th edition of Newswatch 18. I'm Andrew Schneider filling in for Kate Hurley. And I'm Chrissy Amaya. The Executive Vice President and Provost of Iowa State University, Elizabeth Hoffman, announced today that she's resigning from her position. That's right, Chrissy. After nine years in leadership positions at the university, Hoffman released a university-wide email announcing her plans to leave in order to pursue other career options. Hoffman served five years as Iowa State's provost and held the position of Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences for four years prior. Hoffman was instrumental in recruiting and hiring now President Stephen Leith and urges her colleagues to work with Leith to find her replacement. Hoffman's announcement did not come as a surprise to most, as earlier in the academic year she was a job candidate for the pres presidency of the University of New Mexico. Tonight, Iowa State students and the public had the opportunity to attend a speech by ISU professor and Nobel Prize winner Dan Shetman. Shetman spoke about his experiences winning the prize, as well as his discovery of quasi-crystals, which led to the honor of winning the award. The lecture is just one of many that are held at ISU, which range from a variety of subjects. For a full calendar of future lectures, check the events calendar on the Iowa State website. Two weeks from today, students will have the opportunity to vote for their next student body president. I sat down with the two opposing candidates, Jared Knight and Jake Swanson, to discuss their platforms and the issues important to them. Things that we want to do are improve the experience of students and increase the value of the money you pay to go here. Um, you know, in a very small nutshell, that's what we want to do. We're going to stand for uh, not increasing student okay. fees. Well, We're going to stand for <laughs> zero to extremely low increases in housing and dining rates. We're going to stand for low increases in tuition. Uh, Swanson Bartholomew, Dave Bartholomew, my running mate, and I both bring a really fresh perspective to GSB. We're both we both have a year of experience, so we on GSB, so we know kind of how things are run, what's going on, some things we need to change. Um, but we also have uh, a more of an outsider's perspective as well. Dave and I are both kind of in different organizations on campus. Um, I've had a lot of experience with freshman council, international agriculture club, the residence halls. That's kind of where I got my start as a, as a floor president. Uh, beyond that, we're going to stand to make sure that every dollar you spend is valuable and that the university starts taking steps to increase the value of the tuition money that you already pay. We just want to make GSB itself a more friendly atmosphere uh, so students who are, don't, aren't frustrated with the process um, and are more likely to come to our meetings and give us direct input on certain things that are going on. We really want students involved with GSP. There's no reason it shouldn't be a fun organization with a lot of student input and a lot of student following. So we want students to be more engaged in what we're doing as well. Cody and I have done a lot of work this past semester, uh, in past year. Um, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Well, like any representative government, it's always important to vote in the election because this is we're we're for students. We want students to have a say in, in what their student leaders are doing. Students that participate in the process, regardless of who they vote for, the better. Um, students getting involved, engaged in deciding who's going to represent them uh, is very important. ISU TV will continue to update you throughout the next few weeks as the GSB elections approach. To vote on March 5th and 6th, simply go to www.vote.iastate.edu, enter your net ID and password, and submit your ballot online. Tomorrow, the Iowa State Percussion Ensemble will put on a show featuring special guest marimbas, Mark Ford. Ford has been recognized as an outstanding teacher and music coordinator at the University of North Texas. He has also created original music, some of which has been played on national public radio and at concert halls and colleges around the globe. The event is from 7 to 9 tomorrow evening at the Martha Ellen Ty Recital Hall in the Music Building. The show is free and open to the public. The Visha Entertainment Committee announced a lineup change to Friday night's events from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. The pop rock band Parachute will replace T-Mills on the original Friday lineup. T-Mills canceled due to scheduling conflicts. For more information about tickets, visit Visha's website. Live at Visha will take place on the Friday and Saturday nights of Visha Week 2012 in April. And Rachel, I hear the Cyclones had a big day in Hilton this Saturday. Well, that's right, Andrew, and I have all the highlights from this weekend's games and more. 
after the break. So stay tuned. You're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Rachel Begley with your sports update. The Cyclone men's basketball team picked up another big win this Saturday as they took on Oklahoma in Hilton Coliseum. In front of a once again sold out Hilton Coliseum, Scott Christofferson hit the 1,000 career point mark with 25 points. Melvin Edgem overcame a shoulder injury to add a double-double for the Cyclones. That was before he was ejected from the game late in the second from a technical foul. Chris Allen rounded out the top scorers with 16 points. The Cyclones need just one more win to secure a spot in the NCAA tournament, which hopefully will be Wednesday's game against Texas Tech. Tip-off for that game is set for eight in Hilton Coliseum, and the game will also be broadcast on ESPNU. The Iowa State women's basketball team also had the Sooners on the slate in part two of Saturday's doubleheader. ISU TV's very own Andrew Schneider has more. Iowa State is looking for any chance of postseason play, and they needed a big win against the Oklahoma Sooners on Saturday night. The Twister sisters scored early and often, shooting 47.9% from the floor while hitting 11 of 21 from beyond the arc. Nikki Moody was the center of Iowa State's offense, dishing 11 assists after she was benched in the second half against Kansas last Wednesday. Head coach Bill Fenley was impressed with his team's effort against the Sooners. It's a win for our team in a lot of ways, and certainly one that uh, it's probably the first time all year where we had a lot of people contribute and our best player was not at her best. So uh, I think that says a lot. The top scorer of the game was Lauren Mansfield, who tallied 22 points and was 6 of 8 from three-point land. She talked about the importance of hitting the 500 mark in conference play after the 0-5 start. Um, I think it feels really good. Uh, we knew that, you know, we could do it. We, we had confidence. Um, maybe not at the time. We were kind of stressed. And, um, but once we start, started winning and feeling better, um, we really picked up and we just got that confidence. And when we play well, I think we, we have a shot at the game. For ISU TV Sports, I'm Andrew Schneider. The Cyclones are back in action tomorrow night against Missouri. and tip-off is set for 7 p.m. at Hilton Coliseum. Iowa State Gymnastics is at it again tonight in Hilton as they host the Southeast Missouri State Red Hawks. The Cyclones and the Red Hawks have met once before this season in Oklahoma, where Iowa State won 195.175 to 189.600. Tonight's meet began at 6.30, and as of 7.30, the Cyclones had achieved a season high in bars, as well as achieved a lot of 9.8s by various gymnasts. The score as of now had the Cyclones leading by 10 points. And that's all I have for sports. So, Zach, this rain outside, is this going to stick around for the rest of the week? Yeah, rain showers are moving through the area right now, <laughs> but they won't persist much longer. And how will the rest of your week look? Stay tuned as Newswatch 18 continues. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm meteorologist Zach Sharp filling in for Nathan Gogo tonight. Today we hit a high of 42 degrees. We're normal for this time is 41, so we're about normal for this time of year. Our record was 75 and our overnight low was 34, and the record for this time of year was negative 10 degrees. Currently in Ames, it is raining outside with a temperature of 42 degrees with a wind from the southeast at 17 miles per hour. Those gusts are kicking up. They're gusts around 25 to 30 miles per hour, so it's a little breezy outside. Right now, across the state, you can say it's about the same. Rain showers throughout the state, they're pushing to the east, so currently we're experiencing rain shower in Ames and Storm Lake. Currently in Storm Lake, it is 30 degrees, along with Corinda at 32, Pella 34, and over at the Quad Cities, it is 34 as well. Tonight, you can expect those rain showers to move out and become mostly cloudy tonight with a wind from the southeast at 7 to 17 miles per hour with a overnight low of 33 degrees. Tomorrow, you can expect clouds in the morning, then the filter out by the afternoon, causing sunny skies tomorrow afternoon with a west wind of north at 8, 16 miles per hour with a high of 42 degrees. Like I said, taking a look at your extended outlook, 42 for your high tomorrow with those clouds decreasing. But on Wednesday, we'll filter them back in with some chance of rain showers with a low of 33 for your overnight low. And on Thursday, those rain showers will stick around as well with a high of 42 with a low of 26 for Thursday night. On Friday, those pesky clouds will stick around as well and they finally move out by Saturday. And your high on Saturday will be 37 with mostly cloudy skies. That's all I got. Back to the desk. The famed musical My Fair Lady will take the stage this Thursday at Stevens Auditorium. The musical is based off of George Bernard Shaw's play, P 
Pygmalion and figures working class Londoner Eliza Doolittle taking lessons on how to be a lady with a love interest in Henry Higgins. The My Fair Lady production was followed by a popular movie and became the longest running theater production at Stevens. Tickets can still be bought at the Iowa State Center homepage. The show, the show rather begins at 7 o'clock. Also a reminder for you guys up here on set and for all students at Iowa State that tickets for the Visha concerts went on sale this morning. Tickets cost $15 for one night and then $20 for both nights and can be purchased online at Visha's website. And that's all for tonight's edition of News Watch 18. Thanks for joining us. Tune in tomorrow night at 8 for more news, weather, and sports. Have a good night.